All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open up the scene I've been working with. Did you guys all solve your rendering issues? I know some of you are still having problems. Um, I don't think mine is fixed. Yours is not fixed? Raise your hand if it's not fixed. Okay. Um, you might have to go to tech support or maybe try reinstalling the program. Um, I looked into it and I, I don't know what the problems can be. It's perplexing. Okay. So if you go over to your rendering tab, which you can see up here in the, uh, near the top, um, you'll see all your lights that are available. Um, I'm just, I'm just going to go through and explain what each one does again. Um, up here on the upper left hand, um, there's what's called the ambient light. And what this one does is it gives you a nice even light. Um, it, it basically illuminates your whole scene just by placing. Um, I'm going to actually go ahead and create a new scene. I think if I model something real quick, I can illustrate this to you a little faster. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and go to my polygons tab and create a plane. And I'll tap R and just stretch it out, expand it out using the uniform scale. And then I'll do the smooth shade preview. And I'm just going to plop in a couple basic shapes. I've got a cone, a cube, and a sphere. Actually, I'm going to skip the cube for now. But there's the sphere. Maybe a nice pyramid, too. Just create a couple shapes and put them in. And so I'm going to go back to the rendering tab. And let's just kind of see what each one of these lights does. Um, this one is the ambient light. And as you may have noticed, whenever you create an object within Maya, it always puts it in the origin, which is where all the three axes converge. And so if you want to select it, you kind of have to click. Maybe shift or maybe drag select in the middle and then just click on the plane so you don't have the plane selected too. And I'm just going to move this up a little bit. Okay, so with that placed, I'm just going to go ahead and render it. And as you can see, um, it's pretty uniformly lit. You can see a couple illusions, illusion, illusions to shadow on the edges. Um, but it doesn't really look that great. Ambient lights are mostly what I use for what are called um, what's called filling. So let's say you have your directional sun, your directional light, which functions as your sun, um, but your shadows are looking extremely black, and you, you lose everything that's basically shaded. I would use an ambient light um, just to kind of fill everything else in. Um, so over here in your attribute editor, you can see you can change the color of it. You can change the intensity. Um, and then you can even start playing with shadows. So I'm just going to turn those on. Um, and it looks like the only shadows available for your ambient light are ray trace. So I'm just going to toggle that on and re-render it. And you'll notice. Um, Unless you're rendering with mental ray, um, you're not going to see any shadows unless you go into your render settings. And you'll have to go to the Maya software tab in your Maya and your render settings. And then go over to where it says ray trace quality. By default, um, the ray trace shadows are turned off. I don't know why, but apparently Maya wants to conserve processing power. But just check this box right underneath ray tracing quality and just hit close. So now if I render it, it should have the shadows. And anyway. Okay, so there are a couple ways you can get into your render settings. Um, up here where your clapperboards are, there's one that has two dots next to it. If you hover over it, it says display render settings window. You click that, <clears throat> there are two tabs that show up. 
if you're using the Maya software. Um, let's just actually switch it to Mental Ray. If you switch your render um, to Mental Ray, it should automatically have the shadows turn on. And then whenever you make any changes, you can just close it afterwards. So let's try rendering it with Mental Ray now. So see how the shadows are really dark? Um, I, I usually don't use shadows for ambient lights. So I'm just going to turn it off. And let's go ahead and play with... I'm going to go ahead and delete that light for now. And I'll show you what the directional lights do. So again, this one appears in the origin. And if you look closely, um, you'll see a bunch of arrows and lines going in one direction. That's basically the direction the light's going. So if I render this, um, well, I'll render it now. You'll see that the ground plane, because it's at the same angle as a light, it's basically not illuminated. Yes? Okay, you might still be having an issue. Um, if you create the, the ambient light, take a look at the settings. What does it say? Whoa, what's going on? Okay, so what, what does your intensity say right here when you select your ambient light? Okay. Yeah, it might be a render issue. I'll take a look at it later. Okay, so... I'm just going to delete it for now. Okay, so I've got my directional light. And I may have said this before, but I usually use these as suns because all the, the light rays are parallel to each other and it illuminates your whole entire scene. Um, so let's just rotate a little bit. I'm going to do that by hitting the E key. And that brings up the rotate tool. And you can angle it up that way and then maybe use the green axes. OK. So again, by default, the shadows are not turned on, but let's just go ahead and render it and see what it looks like. So it doesn't really look much different from the ambient light right now, but as soon as you turn on the shadows, that's when you'll notice a difference. So make sure your light's selected, and then in the attribute editor, scroll down, and you'll find a tab called shadows. Go ahead and click that. And for, this, for the directional light, I wouldn't use the depth map shadows. Does anyone know what those are? I, did I go over that already? Can someone explain to me? Okay. So with let me just show you then. I'm going to use a depth map shadow. And there's this option for the resolution. If any of you are gamers, you'll you might notice a similarity when you render this. Um, when you have the resolution for a depth map shadow, it basically takes um, like a set resolution and then it projects it down and each pixel basically represents a point of the shadow and so as you can see it's set to only 500 so that would give you a really low resolution that's why it looks really jagged um, but you can kind of fix that to an extent by scrolling down a little bit further um, there's a filter size option if you start giving it a larger filter size it'll start softening those jagged edges so let's just give it a filter size of 5 and see what that looks like. Uh, that didn't really help. Maybe 25. So you can see how it's starting to... I just can't really see that. Can you? So this is with the filter on. It looks a little bit more soft but it still looks horrible. So, and then this is what it was before. Even worse. 
And you can use depth map shadows if you're using like a cone light, uh, an area, or um, a spotlight, sorry. Because those um, project light within a really small area. So those jagged edges won't really show up. But let's just go ahead and switch it to ray trace shadows. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Okay, so it looks pretty uh, pretty flat still. I'm just going to orbit around over here so we can see the shadows better. So a couple options to help your shadows look better is to play with the light angle. Um, you don't want to go too high, but maybe two degrees. I think I think the units are degrees for this. So let's just go ahead and switch that and. Now you'll notice that it's starting to look kind of pixelated. If you zoom in, you'll actually start to see a bunch of spots. So how it calculates this is by creating rays of light, and then it, whenever those rays intersect with your object, it basically starts creating the shadow that way. But in this case, because we don't have very many shadow rays, it looks pretty um, pretty bad. So if you up the rays maybe to five, six, let's just do eight, um, it starts looking a lot better. OK, so now that we have our main light, let's go ahead and add another ambient light. And this will just kind of fill in what the shadows are, whatever shadows are cast. And unlike the, the directional light, the position of the ambient light doesn't really matter. Um, so what I mean by that is this, this um, directional light, you can place it anywhere within your scene. I could put it all the way over here, and it won't really make a difference. It'll still look fine. but. This one, it actually matters a little bit. So let's let's just place it over here. Which one's that? This this is the ambient light. Um, the sun is it's kind of deceiving because if you look at your ambient light, it actually looks like a little sun. <coughs> just think of it as like a point of light, not a sun. Um, the sun is more like like this one. If you guys look outside, the sun usually casts shadows that are parallel to each other because no matter where you move, the sun is still relatively in the same position in the sky. Um, <clears throat> but these point lights, um, because they do have a specific position, the light emanates from that one position, so it, it, its position affects how it illuminates other things. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at our shapes now. So now that I've added this ambient light, which will function as a filler, um, Let's just see how it affects everything. So everything looks kind of washed out because maybe the, the value is a little bit too high. So what I usually do for the filler lights, because they're, they're not the main lights in your scenes, you want them to have an intensity that's a lot less than what your, your main light is. Um, your main lights, I don't know if you guys are familiar with photography, but you, you refer to them as your key lights. And other lights, like this ambient light, they function as a, as a fill. OK, so I'm just going to change the intensity to 0.5. And let's try rendering this again. Let's actually go back and compare. So I switched it back to 1. I'm going to re-render. So you can see now that before, the shaded side was actually lighter than, than the side that's being shined on by the directional light. So it's a little bit more accurate. In fact, I might even switch it down to 0.3. There. OK. Um, 
Let's go ahead and create a spotlight now. I'm going to delete the directional light for now. And I'm going to click on this flashlight looking thing. And as usual, it places it on the origin. So I'm just going to go ahead and lift this up. And then I'm going to use a rotate tool and rotate it about 90 degrees or so. Actually, maybe a little bit more. I want it to be angled as well. And I'm just going to move it out. So this one makes a little bit more sense because it has a cone that basically shows the path of the light and um, like how far it's going to spread out. Let's go ahead and render this one now. So you can see it creates um, this little circle over your shapes. And let's go ahead and turn the shadows on now. For now, let's just use the depth map shadows because they're less expensive to render. Scroll down, depth map. Let's go ahead and re-render it. OK. Let's go ahead and up the filter size. So this is the old render. I'm going to go ahead and save it and then re-render it. So now we can see how the depth map kind of gives it a nicer, nicer feel. And maybe that filter size is too large. It's a little better. Um, there are all sorts of effects you can also do to the spotlight. Um, right now, if you look at the, the illumination circle of it, it's, it basically creates a really harsh line. And you don't really see lights like those in your buildings or in any kind of building unless it's like in a theater and they're purposely using it as a spotlight. So to give it a nicer, softer appearance, what you can do is scroll down in your attributes a little bit. It's near the top. Just scroll down a little bit, and there's what's called the, print, the penumbra angle. And by default, it's set to zero. But if you just move it over to the left or even to the right, it gives you positive or negative values. Um, let's go ahead and render that now. And you can see it gives, rather than having like a perfect circle, it softens it and gives it more of a, like a, more realistic quality, I guess. And then there are a couple other options you can do. If maybe not enough is being illuminated, you can increase the cone angle right here. Let's just do 95. And so now it's illuminating a lot more of your scene. Um, let's go ahead and, ch and play with the resolution just so you can see what it does. I'm going to go back down to where it says depth map shadow attributes and I'm going to get rid of the filter size. I'll just set it back to zero. And then here, the resolution, um, I think 2000 pixels is the largest you want to go for the depth map. And that goes for texture files as well. I think some of you ran into problems with really large texture files for your materials. Um, I might have told you to adjust them to a size that's below 2,000 pixels. So let's just go ahead and set it to 2,000. And I'm going to go ahead and re-render that. So now you can see the shadows are really crisp and Let's get a little bit closer.
And what's nice is that there's not really a whole lot of jaggedness to the edges. Whereas if you, let's just put it to a resolution of 250, you can start to see a lot of jaggedness then. But let's leave it at 2000. And I'll give it a filter size of five. So you can see five is way too much. The shadows basically almost disappear. Um, so you want to keep it low. Keep it a low filter size. And you can see the quality of the shadows isn't really that good. You have this strange shadow appearing at the edge of the pyramid here. So that's why I usually shy away from depth map shadows. They, they just don't look as good as ray trace shadows. So let's go ahead and switch it over and down here. So again, it's really crisp. I'm going to change the angle to five degrees. And now you can see that it just looks like little spots. So what, what do you guys think I have to do then to make it look better? Um, not for the ray trace shadows. You want to, you actually want to increase the number of shadow rays. The filter size is only for the depth map shadows. Let's go ahead and if I switch it to two, it won't be much of a difference. Three, not really. I think looks a little. It's starting to look a little bit better. I think eight is usually where you want to be. Let's just do something crazy like 36. Yeah, that looks pretty good. But when you have a huge scene with tons of objects and they're each casting shadows, um, that's when it really starts getting bogged down. So I probably would stay somewhere around six or eight um, rays. Or if you're noticing that it looks kind of bad, then just decrease the light radius. Um, Let's go back to two degrees. OK. So let's go ahead and deal with the point light. I'm going to go ahead and delete the spotlight for now. Oh, um, yeah, you could. I, I showed you guys how to do layers. Oh, okay. I could um, just select the light and then assign a new layer. Just rename it. Um, point light for this one. Good question. Let's just do that. And I think if you turn turn it off, it will not render either. Yeah, so now you can see it's just the the fill light that's illuminating. Let's go ahead and turn it back on. OK. <clears throat> now, there, there's not a whole lot of difference between the ambient light and the point light. Um, I think the point lights have a couple more options in terms of decay and how they cast shadows. Let's go ahead and see. So down here. Yeah, see how the it gives me the option for depth map shadows for the point light, but not for the ambient light. Um, these are really nice to use if you have like a like let's say you have a little lamp in your living room that you modeled. You could just throw in a little point light in there and then um, depending on the settings you have on the actual um, lampshade, it'll still illuminate the whole room and give it a nice effect. <clears throat> but these are good if you want to have like a, like just a general 
light placed somewhere. <clears throat> okay, so over here, let's go back up. Let's go ahead and play with these settings a little bit. So <clears throat> just like all your other lights, you have the option of playing with the color. Let's go ahead and change the color a little bit. You'll notice this, um, this wheel here that has a little black line going through it. You pick the shade by dragging this along. And then you can see it's still white over here. This is the color that it's going to be output as. So if that's not changing, you have to drag this little white square around. So in this case, I want it to be kind of a tungsten light from like an incandescent bulb. So I'm just going to change it to this warm color. Now let's go ahead and re-render it. So now you can see a little light goes a long way. Maybe that's too much. OK. And then for my ambient light, I'm going to change its color to kind of a bluish color. If, you ever, if you're ever walking around outside on a sunny day, you'll notice that the shadows themselves, they're, they're not just black or like a gray color. They tend to have kind of a bluish tint. Um, that's from the sky. Um, believe it or not, the sky is actually em emitting quite a bit of light as well, not just the sun. So I guess in this case, um, the sky itself is acting as a fill light. Um, if we get to it later, I can show you um, some more advanced lighting techniques that do just that. Um, <clears throat> but for now, let's just change the color of this. So I'm just going to do a slightly blue color. OK. And let's go ahead and up the intensity of this a bit. I'm going to type in 1.25. Someone want to tell me what I should do next? What's missing? Shadows. Okay. So let's go ahead and do ray trace shadows. Down here. And I'll just give it a light angle here and shadow rays of 8. So now if you look closely, the, the shadows look a little bit more realistic now. Um, kind of looks like a sunset type setting. You know how the sun usually becomes like this orangish color. Um, it's really beautiful, huh? OK, let's go back up here. Let's give it an intensity of 2. OK, that looks a little better. Although this sphere looks like it's floating, doesn't it? I think it is, actually. Yeah. OK. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and create. Um, I'm going to duplicate this plane. I'm going to select it, and then hold Control and hit D. And you can usually tell if you duplicate something because a lot of the grid lines or the, the edges, they look dotted. Um, I don't know if Maya meant to do this, but it, it's helpful. Sometimes people try duplicating things and they, don't, they can't select the duplicated object, so they just keep duplicating it. And so this is a good way to tell if you have something that's duplicated. I'm just going to move this up and shrink it a little bit. This is going to function as our ceiling, I guess. Um, you select your object and hold control and then push the letter D. <clears throat> All right, um, let's see. Let me give you a couple tips now with materials. Oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and create an area light now. Getting ahead of myself. Um, it's this one that looks like a, like a square with two diagonals going through it. Um, and there's another light called a volume light. I, I don't really use that one. I think 
It's you guys won't need it for what you do, so don't worry about it. I'm gonna delete that light for now, the spotlight I or the point light I created. And <clears throat> area lights are a little bit more difficult to describe, but um, I guess the best way to describe them is if you ever have like a like a bank of fluorescent lights, usually it's like a long rectangle and it usually emits light in kind of a scattered way where um well anyway it, basically the light comes from a two-dimensional two plane so what it does is it creates really soft, soft shadows and um, like a more evenly distributed light on an object well not the tube itself I'm talking about like the bank of lights like the fixture might have a row of three and then like some kind of filter over it so it kind of it doesn't look like you, you wouldn't be able to see the tubes themselves it would just be more of a rectangle um, anyway maybe this will help illuminate it a little bit better so when you create your area light you'll notice that it creates a rectangle and it has a light coming out on one side or I'm sorry a line um, the line represents the direction of the light so you want to angle it towards your objects I'm just going to move it over this way a bit and then rotate it. And then I'm going to angle it down. All right. Let's go ahead and render that. OK. So there's something interesting about these lights. Um, because they emit the light on a 2D plane, they basically go in all directions um, outside the plane. And similar to real lights where like the further away you are from them, the less they shine. Um, this has the same principle. So I'm just going to move it a little bit closer and maybe that'll help you guys see. Let me re-render this. So this is the first position. I'm going to move it closer. And now you can see it got a little bit brighter. And another way to, to make them brighter is rather than changing the intensity, you can actually change the size of it and it'll become more intense. So in that case, it's a little, it's a little bit too intense. So let's go ahead and move it back out. OK. Um, you can use it to light a room or um, I've used it in the past where let's say I have an outdoor scene and um, maybe it's kind of a like a courtyard or something so the light the sun might be shining down onto one side but then the other one's in shadow um, rather than creating um, a point light or something somewhere within that space you can create an area light and it kind of gives it a more of a natural illumination. Um, I helped a buddy out with that very same process. Um, but in this case, I think it's still too bright. So I'm going to decrease the intensity, but leave the size the same. Actually, just kidding. I'm going to leave it at one. All right, what's missing here? Okay, let's go ahead and what do you guys think? Should I use depth map or ray trace? Okay. What should I do? Should I increase the number of shadow rays or the ray depth limit? There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and delete that one for now. And I'm just going to move this. Actually, I'll leave that light alone too. So, a lot of times when you guys want to have like a Let's say a can light. Do you guys know what can lights are? 
Um, you see them a lot where you have a drop down ceiling, um, kind of like this. There might be a hole and then there's like a, a light that's recessed up in there. That's what you call a can light. Um, so for those types of fixtures, if you want to create the light itself using a spotlight, let's go ahead and enlarge this one. Remember what I said, um, when you scale these, it doesn't really affect the quality of light or how much light comes out of it. That only matters for the area light. So I'll just make this one bigger so you can see what's going on a little bit better. And I'm going to rotate it. And if you guys are really particular, um, you'll notice that it's kind of hard to snap this to 90 degrees. So to do that, what you can do is click on this tab in the attribute editor. Um, this will let you manually type in what the rotation angle is. So you can kind of see it's, it's this value here that changes. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in negative 90. There we go. And then I'll position this up here. And remember, don't let the tip of the cone penetrate the, the polygons. Otherwise, once you turn on the shadows, nothing will happen. So let's just go ahead and turn the shadow on. Right now, it's, it went through, so I'm just going to show you what happens. And you can see it's not lighting anything. But now if we go above, oh, it's not lighting anything there either. Oh, there it is. So let's just move it down below the plane. And I'm going to show you a little trick that I usually do. Rather than cutting holes in the ceiling, which can be um, annoying and it just takes a while and you have to deal with geometry, I usually fake the look of the light bulb by creating a material. So what I'll do is I'll just create a simple cylinder. And I'll just position it directly above this thing. So you can see it's right above the light. Actually, I'm going to shrink this down a little bit so it's not too thick. So I'll just position it there. And what you want to do is create a material that um, it basically pretends to be a light, but really it's not a light. And then you can add an effect to make it look like it's glowing. Um, it's really easy to do. So to do that, open up your hypershade. And create a new Lambert. Do you guys know? I, do you know why I want to use a Lambert? Who can answer? Yep. So let's just call this um, light glow. And let's give it a color of yellow. Nice golden color. Not too saturated though. And then. Over here, if you play with the incandescence, it's going to start, it'll start showing up even though there's not much light shining on it. So let's just go back down to here and render it for now. Let's see what that looks like. What's going on? Okay. Actually, it's not really showing up yet. So. Um, go ahead and give it an ambient color too. Just somewhere in the middle. Put the incandescence and the ambient color in the middle. Oh, it would help if we could see it. There we go. Nope, oh, still not showing up. Actually, maybe it is. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in real close. Okay, yeah, it's not really doing much. Oh, do you know why? <laughs> no, because I didn't apply the material. I didn't apply the material to it yet. It's just regular Lambert one still. So I have it selected. 
I'm going to assign that material to selection. And you can see it already changed. So let's try that again. So now it looks like the light's coming from a little hole in the ceiling. Um, let's go back to the hypershade. Select your material. And let's go ahead and scroll down. You'll reach something that's called special effects. And you'll see the glow intensity listed. It's set to zero by default. Let's go ahead and up that to 0 0.2. Now if we re-render it, you'll see something kind of cool. So that's just a quick, quick and dirty way to get a nice little light effect. What are some other things I should do to the light itself to change it? Maybe make the path illuminated. The path? Yeah. So like a fog effect? Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and try that then. I think it's an option down here. Okay. And this one's a little bit tricky. I sometimes have trouble with it. But I went down to the fog, light fog effects, and I just clicked this button, and it automatically linked the fog effect to it. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. It looks okay. It's kind of exaggerated. It kind of looks like there was a fire in the building, and there's still a lot of smoke in there. So let's go ahead and let's reduce the density. Maybe if we give it a density of 0.1. Yeah, that's a lot better. Did you guys see where I did that? I just scrolled down to right below the light effects. And let's go ahead and play with the color too. Let's have it match the glow. And you won't really notice it as much, but it'll it'll help a little bit. Yeah, looks a lot better. And so what else do you guys think I should change on the light? Do you remember what it's called? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the penumbra. <laughs> so let's go ahead and find that value. And I'll just drag this over to the left. That looks a lot better. And on your spare time, just kind of play around with all these effects. There are too many to go through in one day, but um, I'll show you one other thing, actually. Um, if you notice what I explained earlier about the area light, how it decays it the further away it is from what it's illuminating based on its distance, you can do kind of the same thing with other lights, um, but it's called something different. It's called a decay rate. Um, so right now, there's no decay on it at all. But let's go ahead and do linear. There are a couple other options. Um, if you guys are familiar with math, um, there's a. I hope they're familiar with. Math. <laughs> well, like graphing. <laughs> Sorry, I, I shouldn't assume you guys don't know math. But. Unknown subject math. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're almost out of time, huh? Yeah. Okay. So let's. I'll just put it on a linear decay, and I'll show you what it does. Um, so basically. Things that are really close to light will be illuminated, but nothing else will. So I'm just going to move this sphere straight up to kind of show that. Actually, um, as soon as you add the decay, it really lowers the value of the light a lot. See how it's barely illuminating it? So automatically, when you create a decay, just up the value by a, val by a factor of 10. So let's try that now. Well, it's just like in real in in real lights, it uh, decays logarithmically. So as it goes out, it, proportionally, it, it falls off. Yeah. So okay. Just being a little bit more realistic. 
So um, we we have. I just wanted to look over. They they have your uh, sketchbooks graded. I just wanted to go over and look at them, so you'll be able to pick them up from them uh, this afternoon after studio. So I just wanted to go over them one more time. Huh?